In this video we're going to talk about properties. The properties that you specify in an XML document is equivalent to properties that you specify in a programming language. Take the example of a Java program. You would have a couple of variables like this. The value 3.14 can be represented using this variable pi. Similarly this URL can be represented using this variable URL. The same thing can be accomplished in your ant XML document just as you see here. So basically you have a key and a value pair. Similarly you have a key and a value pair as well. You're going to use this task property to be able to define your own property just as you see here. And the advantage of using the property is similar to the advantages you have in using a variable in programming language. For instance, you don't have to type this value everywhere in your program. You can just use this variable name instead. It's very readable. Also, if you want to make changes, you don't have to make changes everywhere wherever this value is residing in your program. Instead, you can just change it in the variable itself and it would get reflected everywhere. So likewise, you're going to represent this value by using this key and you're going to use it across your XML document in your tasks. Similarly, you don't have to type the entire URL everywhere. Instead, you can just represent this URL using this key and you're going to use this key across your XML document. So that tomorrow, let's say that you wanted to point to a different website, then you can just simply change it over here and it would get reflected across your entire document. So that's a quick understanding on properties and you can see how we defined one here. Same thing is defined over here as well. But unlike in Java where you have multiple data types, you're not going to have any data types in here. Everything is considered to be a string. So this is not considered as an integer or something. This is still a string equivalent to this. So we have couple of properties specified here and I'm just using this task echo to be able to display them and in order to display them we need to use the following syntax. We're going to start by saying dollar sign and then starting curly brace. You're going to specify the key name and you end with a curly brace. And this particular piece of code is actually going to display the value that is corresponding to this key. So you're going to use dollar curly brace and end with a curly brace. So similarly we're also displaying this particular property using the same syntax. The rest of the text is just for presentation purpose. When we run this uh, XML document we're going to see this text as simple as that. Similarly there are certain properties which you don't have to manually define. We can get the access to the system properties and as an example you want to say OS stands for operating system dot name to display the OS name. Similarly another example of a system property would be Java dot VM dot vendor is going to display the JVM vendor name of the JVM vendor in our case it's Oracle and we have host of such system properties we can use in our XML document and I've actually created a document for the same where I've listed all the list of system properties available that you can use in your XML document. You can just take a look at it along with their descriptions. And similarly we also have built-in properties an example of which you can see here. We're trying to display the base directory. This would be whatever the attribute that you give in the project tag. Similarly you can also display the ant home, the home directory of the ant and this is going to be whatever the environment variable that you set. Finally you can also use a method like toString to display a type. Now we haven't yet talked about types. We'll, we will talk about it in coming videos but just for the sake of this example here is an example of a type file set 
and is actually going to represent all the files that we mentioned here. In our case, we're just trying to consider all the XML files in the current directory. And we're going to refer to this type using this identifier ID. And in here, I'm just trying to echo this particular type by using this two string method two string colon and then the ID, the reference ID. And obviously, in order to display, we're going to use the syntax dollar curly brace and end with a curly brace. So this would basically display this particular type based on how the code is written in the ant library for this type. Again, we're going to talk about types at later point of time. But for now, just try to get some understanding on this particular statement. Pretty straightforward. You can think of this as we're trying to display an object using its two string method. And in fact, behind the scenes, it is going to be a two string method. So let's see how everything goes by running this script. So user defined properties, and you're going to see both the properties that we defined in here as well as you see system properties, built-in properties. So we got the OS name, Windows 10. Vendor is going to be Oracle Corporation. Built-in properties, base directory is actually going to display the absolute path to the current directory because that's what is considered. When you don't give any attribute in here to set the base directory, then it's just going to assume the directory to be wherever your XML file is residing. And so we have the following result. And home is is exactly the same. And finally, two string of file set type. So we got a couple of XML documents in the current directory. And so they are being displayed. So you can't really control how this is going to get displayed. It's all written in the two string logic of this particular type file set. Again, we're going to talk about types in coming videos. Lastly, I'd like to mention that you can also have a properties file created. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a properties file quickly. Let's call it build dot properties file. Let me add a couple of entries in here. I'm going to say some name equals. So we know that dot properties file will have key value pairs and some value. I'm going to save it and let's go here. Now we're going to write a task here that will refer to this particular properties file so that now we can actually use this properties file to deal with our properties. Now this statement is equivalent to this one. Let me show you what I mean. You're going to use the same task property but this time the attribute is going to change to file and we would point to that file build dot properties we don't need this now we can actually display using the echo message something like this and let's give its key name all right let's get rid of all this let's keep the text more relevant so let's say from properties file or whatever, doesn't matter. And let's run our script and see if things work well. Well, they did. You see that value. All right, that's it on properties. See you soon.